morning, Mark. How are you today? I'm fantastic. How are you? I am good. I'm good. Thank you very much for joining us for another In Conversation With uh, chat. Um, so Mark is based in Singapore, aren't you? So, um, so thank you for having a late afternoon <laughs> chat rather than a morning one. Uh, but appreciate that. But we've been doing amazing work together around virtual selling which has obviously due to circumstances seen a big uh, increase um, but lots of businesses are seeing the benefits so um, yeah what what do you think about virtual selling and, and the difference between face-to-face -face selling what is your thoughts on it yeah I think you know it's really challenging first of all I mean selling can be a very kind of organic experience where we want to meet with people shake a person's hand look them in the eye like there's still a very kind of almost old-fashioned way of approaching sales and when a salesperson and the and the purchaser don't kind of have that face-to-face -face, it can make the the relationship building aspect of sales rather difficult so I think for salespeople or anyone who's in a sales or a service kind of role we have to work a lot harder to build that rapport build the relationship get the trust between us and the potential um, the prospect you know it, it just takes a little bit more work for us it's it's tougher to do but not impossible there's you know it's if we follow the techniques that we, we know and understand and if we work hard at it i think it's possible to do great yeah i absolutely agree you have to work harder i think but be mindful of that um sure. and be re reflective of how are you doing things it's not a straight translation from face to face to virtual because you might not have those clues that you might normally have in in person so what would you say to a manager or an individual who is a team that are, are looking to really get his team super you know hot on being able to virtual sell or if you're an individual who is virtual selling what sort of things would you say to them well, I think the first thing we have to do, right, is you have to, as you just said, work hard to replace maybe what occurs naturally. Like, you look at what occurs naturally in a relationship between two people. We get to know each other. We get a feel for each other, all those things. That can't happen just automatically in the virtual environment. So we have to work hard for that. So what I would say to a manager who's managing a team that has to sell virtually or to salespeople is, sit down and really think about how do you build relationships? What are some of the, the, the um, principles that you can follow to build good relationships? Listening, your questioning skills, um, building that kind of rapport with people. And as a manager, we have to make sure that our subordinates are doing that. And we have to support them doing that. And that also means we have to learn how to manage virtually as well. So I think one is to, the first thing is to really just work hard to replace what would normally happen automatically with an actual process um, and, and build a process for ourselves. So we have a, a new set of habits um, to make ourselves uh, good salespeople. And I think that we need to also give the people we're dealing with kind of a little bit more leeway. This, this is a weird, unnatural environment. I mean, I'm here in Singapore, you're over in, in the UK and there's cameras and lights and it's like, oh, should I look here? Should I look at your face? You know, what, what should I? So it can be a little <laughs> discombobulating. I don't know if that's a real word, but yeah. it can kind of be a little off-putting. And so that's fine. There's nothing wrong. It's just we just have to work hard to overcome that and to build our habits and build our skill sets to, to compensate and to give the people we're speaking to the space to kind of come to us in that, in that regard as well. So maybe if you're a salesperson and it used to take you, you know, two phone calls and one meeting to close a sale, Maybe it takes you three or four Zoom meetings to close the sale. Okay, if that's our new reality, then that's that's our new reality. So get good at that. Build a process for that. Give people the space for that. Don't push them at the end of the first meeting. Just say, great, take a moment, have a read of what I've sent you, have a think about our conversation today. I'll give you a ring back in a, you know three days, in a week, whatever that might be. So that's what I mean about process. We may need to adjust the hows and, way, um, hows and whys of what we're doing in order to make it work. But it's not, it's not impossible. Yeah, because it, what? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, I, I was just thinking, actually, what we found is when we've, when we've been working with our clients around this topic mm -hmm. is that one sales 
size doesn't fit all. And actually we do need to adjust um, based upon the different sales cycles that the business might have or how they've done business before. The clients as well obviously needs to be at the forefront of, of creating that process. Um, but like you say, what has been really nice to see is that they've been allowed to have that space to really consider those the process in itself it's yeah. not just you know just getting on with it and being busy as yeah. we've talked about in other conversations yeah and we're in a different time we're in a, in a different it's not just the the virtuality that's making this a difficult time to sell it's also a, a dodgy time economically business is slowing down now, i've got clients who are in, in the hotel business and you know when you're they're they're going through an unprecedented slowdown so we also, I think, as salespeople have to get inside our client's mind and, and get that, you know, they're dealing with some challenges in their business. So we can't use, as you say, one size fits all, but we also maybe can't use the same uh, method we were using six months or a year ago. So like that famous book, mm -hmm. what got us here won't get us there. Um, so we may need to ask new questions. And, and, you know, I honestly think as salespeople, one thing we can do is of what it is that makes a salesperson really excellent. Can we ask questions? Can we really listen to what the prospect is saying? Can we hear not just what they want, but why they want it? Can we help them deepen their understanding of their own problems and how our solution can fix that problem? You know, so that the basic fundamentals of what it takes to be a great salesperson, we gotta go back to that. You know, this is tough mm. times. And, and I think that's what's going to make the difference between a good salesperson and, and someone who gets thrown off by a camera um, is whether we can go right yeah. back to the fundamentals of what we're good at. And and also new skills. Yes, we need to get good with technology if, if that's not our forte. Tough luck. It's like that's the world we live in right now. Absolutely. Well, I'll just finish on the point, which I always feel whenever I speak to you, Mark, I always feel really motivated and energized. And actually, motivation is a really important mindset and, you know, positive mindset, having high motivation for a salesperson, because it can be a bit of a roller coaster. And sometimes you just don't feel like speaking to your clients or don't feel like it. But actually, you've just got to get on with it. And that motivation piece is something I know you re are really passionate about. And we, I, I always feel motivated anyway when I speak to you. <laughs> so, um, what would you say about motivation for salespeople? Yeah, I think, you know, for me, the, the, you're, you're absolutely right. I'm glad I, uh, our conversations motivate you. That makes me feel good. I think it's about finding our passion. So to the salesperson who's, who's watching this, I'd say, go back and find the passion that got you into this in the first place. I honestly think being a salesperson is the hardest job in the world in many ways. You know, people say, oh, you know, other, in other jobs, they complain about their performance appraisal. And it's like, I get a performance appraisal every time I pick up the phone. It's like, I get the sale or I don't. So, you know, we're used to that instantaneous judgment. It's a tough job. And to the managers, I'd say, don't ignore that in this, especially in this time period. Make time for your staff, get on the phone with them, not just to chase them in their numbers and make sure you're cracking the whip, but yeah, yeah, you gotta do that, fine. Call them up and just say, how you doing? How's life? You know, we're all, a lot of us, certainly here in Singapore, most of us are still working from home. Most of the world is still in some version of work from home. And so that isolation, I think, is also playing on people's minds a little bit. So mm -hmm. as a manager and a leader in your organization, reach out, just check in with people. What do they need? Are they supported? Do they have what they need to do their job well? And I guarantee you what they don't need is you cracking the whip. What they need is you just mm -hmm. making sure that they're feeling the motivation that they need to feel to pick up the phone or make the emails or do whatever process they need to do. And, and if we yeah. do that and we work together as a team, that's what's going to make the difference. And that's how people can stay motivated. Because otherwise you just, you're just a lonely person in your, in your living room or your spare bedroom trying your hardest to, to, to do it. And sometimes man, it can feel really tough. They can. Yeah. Um, so I think you have to work as a team and, and, and teammates. If you're a salesperson and you're on a team of salespeople, take an initiative, call all your sales uh, buddies and say, right, let's just have a meeting nine o'clock on Monday morning, 15 minutes, get on a Zoom, just chat, complain, whatever, whatever, have our coffee and just have a moment together so that we can still feel that human connectedness and that relatedness. That's what's mm -hmm. going to make the difference. Um, and last yeah. thing, last thing, tip and trick. One, one, of the, one of the things I know a salesman who does here, he will use, um, you know, the food ordering apps on your phone where you can, you can order yeah. like McDonald's or Starbucks. 
Amazing. <laughs> it's called, there's one here called Grab. I don't know if it's in the UK or everywhere else, but it's like Uber Eats or these kinds of things. He will send a coffee and a Danish to somebody, a client, a Aww. prospect, and say, can we have coffee on Tuesday? And send them a coffee and a Danish, and then he has his coffee, and they have a virtual coffee. I mean, it's Love a it. little tiny thing, but it, it gets in meetings. You know, so it's that. It's that creation of the human connection so that we might be 10,000 kilometers apart as you and I are, but we can still sit down, have our cup of tea, have a chat, yeah. and get some work. Have our cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, and that's it. You know, it's just about reminding ourselves that we're still humans and we're still connected to each other, even though we might not feel like yeah. it sometimes. Love it. Absolutely love it. Well, it's been a Pleasure, as always, talking to you. Thank you so much for your insights, and uh, we'll we'll speak again soon, no doubt. But thanks so Great. much, Mark, for everything you shared today.